It's actually getting to be kind of dizzying. Robot vacuums are popping onto the market like the game of robot whack-a-mole. One of the newest bots to arrive for review is the Roborock S7 Max Ultra. But what are you getting and not getting with the S7 Max Ultra, and does it have what it takes to stand out in this competitive space? I got to try out this robot vacuum and mopping combo for about a week here in my home, and in this review, I'll tell you what it's like to set up and to use, what the key features are that might be selling you on this version, how it compares to other robots in the Roborock family, including the too close for comfort named S7 Max V Ultra. I'll also put it through some cleaning tests and wrap things up by going over the pros and the cons and letting you know if I think this is a good floor cleaning robot for you. With both vacuuming and mopping, this bot is designed to be your whole home floor cleaning solution. From its high powered 5,500 pascals of suction to its obstacle avoidance and special Vibra Rise mopping system, you'll find all the bells and whistles you'd typically see on other robot floor cleaners in this price range. The S7 here uses a flat mopping plate with a removable pad that vibrates to scrub your floors clean. It is significantly less plush than the new Roborock Q Revo here, which I just finished reviewing, and this option, as you can see, uses spinning mopping pads instead of that vibrating plate. Underneath, a single vacuum roller pulls up the dirt. While the vacuum itself is the star, it's the rock dock that steals the show. The cleaning and maintenance dock allows you to charge your Roborock S7 Max Ultra and also serves as the cleaning hub where the vacuum empties the dustbin, refills its onboard water tank with fresh clean water, and then washes the mop. So you're probably wondering what exactly is the difference between the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra and the Roborock S7 Max Ultra. In a word, it's drying. In this new Max Ultra version, there is now automatic drying of the mopping pads, which was missing from the Max V Ultra. Aside from the S7 Max Ultra having that warm air drying, otherwise all their features are almost identical. The setup process for pretty much every Roborock vacuum I've ever tried has been a breeze, combining speed with simplicity. The large, wide base station may pose a placement challenge, but it's a trade-off for the array of features this robot vacuum will give you. Once the robot is connected to power and has a partial charge, you can connect it with the user-friendly Roborock app, which becomes your ultimate command center for the bot, allowing you to schedule cleaning sessions, turn the robot on and off, and fine-tune other settings. Once you're connected to the app, the first mission is to send it out on an initial mapping run so it can familiarize itself with your home's layout and draw a specific virtual map. There's a bunch of sensors on the vacuum allowing it to cleverly get a scan of your home's layout and calculate the best routes for efficient cleaning. This mapping process is astonishingly fast and I was astounded by the accuracy after just a 20 minute run. With the map you can then label rooms and establish designated no-go zones if you need to as well. Let's get to the goods, the cleaning effectiveness. I put all of my robot vacuums and mops through exactly the same cleaning tests. I'll use them around my house for several days or a week just to see how they do on their own. Then I'll spill things like finer flour, oatmeal or rice and larger cracker pieces just to see how well the robot can tackle debris. When the robot will also mop, I'll spill things like coffee or wine on the floor to see how it deals with on-the-spot messes, but I'll also let other liquids dry to check its scrubbing prowess. Let's actually watch how well it mops. It was quite thorough in my testing. The bot easily sopped up small wet spills, but to be clear, this isn't a shop vac and you should really be wiping up the bulk of bigger messes and letting the robot give the floor a final wipe down. With more dried on spills, I was impressed with how well it could clean. It got about 95% of dried on stains in one pass, and what it couldn't scrub in one go, it finished off during the rest of its clean. Plus, since it has intelligent navigation, you can see how well the vacuum identifies the surface it's currently on, and it'll lift the mopping pad on carpet. Did you catch it? It'll also drop it back down when it senses it's back on a hard surface. After every mopping run, the robot is going to return to the dock here to wash and then dry its mopping pads. The base of the dock in here, and you can see it a little bit, contains a brush and washing system that essentially floods the pads with clean water and then suctions out the dirty water after that washing cycle. A small fan will dry the pads afterwards. A full drying cycle does take several hours, but it is completely silent, and trust me, you won't be able to hear it. 
So how well does it vacuum? The suction on this vacuum is incredibly strong and that all but guarantees a good result. The S7 Max Ultra pretty much effortlessly tackled all of my intentional messes. It easily inhaled finer flour from my rug and overall I'd say it swept up about 98% of all debris on the floors. You've also got the power to dial up or down the intensity. You can lower the volume of the vacuum by lowering the suction if you're trying to work. Anytime the vacuum's onboard dustbin is full, the vacuum will return back to its base station to empty the debris into that sealed dust bag. You'll get about six to eight weeks of debris in the bag, depending, of course, on how often you're running the vacuum and how dirty your house is. Overall, there are a lot of pros to this machine. It's an outstanding and powerful vacuum and it picks up well over 95% of debris of all kinds. You can schedule the bot to handle regular cleanings on its own and by dialing the suction up or down, you can actually manage the noise level too. The maintenance features on the rock dock here means you never have to empty the onboard dustbin and your mopping pad is going to stay clean and mildew free thanks to the addition of the cleaning and the mop drying. Those are the pros. What are the cons? Some homeowners may not be a fan of the single vibrating mopping pads and may prefer the more plush spinning pads instead like those found on the Q Revo. I've actually found that both types of mopping pad can be quite effective. While no robot mop is perfect at getting 100% of dried on spills off of your floors, I'm still surprised by how well that single flat mopping plate is able to perform. The only other major downside tends to be the cost of these all-in-one floor robots. They are quite expensive and it's definitely something to consider if you want to ante up or not. I can say I've been using a robot vacuum of one type or another for about a decade here in my two dog home and I do find it cuts down on my overall cleaning time and also keeps the house generally looking tidy. So for that reason I can recommend a robot vacuum and mop combo to you and I think the Roborock S7 Max Ultra is a pretty great option. It sells for about $12.99 US and you can get it from Roborock or other retailers. But if you want to check out some other options, watch my full review of the Roborock Q Revo or see what the competition is up to right now.